Perfect. I appreciate, hang on one second, I'm getting messages. I appreciate you sharing, um, giving up your class time and library time and joining a bunch of, you know, geeky librarians and to talk about all cool library stuff. Are you guys seeing my screen or something weird happening? Can you give me a thumbs up? Ashley, I have a thumbs up from you. Okay, we see it. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. Tech issues abound. <laughs> so here's the really fun thing, guys, is let's go ahead and get right into it. So um, hang on one second. There we go. Okay. Whoop, whoop. All right. So here I am, Jeanette Gonzalez. I'm the obnoxious loud librarian from Ridgewood High School. You might be thinking, where the heck is Ridgewood High School? We are, everyone thinks we're in the city of Chicago. We are referred to the island in the city because we are surrounded by the city of Chicago. I joke around one block in the city, one block not. We are a very small school, only about a thousand kids, a hundred and some odd staff members. And if you're wondering what time of year I'm having, three new admin, 20, 26 new staff member. It's exciting. So let's get to the meat potatoes. I love books. I love authors. Anyone who knows me, my bread and butter is I was hired specifically to create a reading culture in my school. So if you look at our screen of ideas, which is very important, we're going to work with this as a group as much as we can over Zoom. We are going to talk about ideas, and ideally, we would talk about this in a group. So we're going to figure out how to do this over Zoom. Hey, Jeanette, we can't we can't see a presentation. We just see your um, background. My face. Ah, thank you. Let me. I'm telling you, my family. So many. Yeah, we need to have presentation. I'm having so many tech issues. Hang on. Let's stop sharing. Let's start again, people. Ah, I know why, because I was in another class. Hang on, I was presenting in a class and I have multiple screens, so that's why. Desktop two. Let's see, is this working again? Nope. Ah, you get to see my fun desktop, but that's not the one I want. Hang on. If not, we're going low tech, don't even worry. Um, do, 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 do. do your, uh, try your main screen, Jeanette, when you share. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. I, and okay. I'm, not I'm having Zoom issues this year. Hang on. This has been happening to me a lot this year. It is. And I think, and I'm not going to lie, we've been having um, new IT people that I think reinstalled things on my Mac and they changed my desktop settings. But it you doesn't me, matter. Do you want me to share your slides that you sent them to me yesterday? That would be fabulous. And you okay. just need to go to the third slide. Okay. Hold on one second. That would be amazing. Because really, I just want that up there so people can see it. And then, all right. I have so many messages under this one title heading though. So hold on. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, there you don't are. Don't worry about it. Give me one okay. second. We're, this is what we're going to do because we always have plan B. I'm sending you a Kahoot that actually has everything in there. And this is how we're getting into the meeting. So it doesn't matter if you have it or not. Right. So. All right, I'm sending you this Kahoot. If you can please open it up to play along. And don't worry, this will have all the slides. It's a fun little way to get you guys uh, talking about programming without actually, you know, having to have my slides. And don't worry, there's examples and everything. Hang on. Ooh, internet is slow. So just to let you guys know, the four categories that I'm going to be talking about are going to be dealing with things like obviously author visits I mentioned, but think don't think of author visits as just like obviously writers and obviously authors. They can just be experts in the field. So if you're researching something with your science person, bring in a scientist, whatever you're doing. We have things like community connections and everything like that um, and curricular connections. That's going to be more like, you know, what's going on in the classroom? Can I partner with the public library and do what I need to do? And then also things like our monthly celebrations, um, which are things like I feel like a lot of libraries are really good at already. We're thinking are like, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month. We have our teen reading group and all this other stuff. So this isn't working. Is this working for you guys at all? Ah, yay. It's not I think our, we might even nix. Okay, so here's the deal. Originally, I was going to have this really fun Kahoot where you guys can tell me which one I wanted to focus on, but who knows if it's actually working. So here's the deal. I was going to have you do a survey and help to decide, do we want to focus on celebrations? 
Do we want to focus on curriculum and community connections? Do we want to talk about author visits or do we want to talk about makerspace activities? And of course, there are more library ideas, but these are kind of like the four categories that I was brainstorming and came up with. So if anyone is brave and bold, since we can't really do the poll thing and wants to just shout out, let's go ahead and talk about number one or number two. Or if you're like, I'm too shy to do that, I'm sick of talking, throw it in chat and we'll kind of bounce around from there. Okay, it looks like a lot of chat, so give me a second. I'm gonna ver visually just kind of look and see. Okay, we got a lot of celebrations. Okay. Three, four, one, three, two, all. <laughs> I love you, Shannon. Um, curricular, maker says, okay. We're kind of bouncing. I feel like everyone wants everything. Okay, so here's the deal. What I'm going to bounce around with is I am going to start. And here's the deal. I want you guys to interrupt me because ideally this would be a little group discussion, right? Um, I'm going to quickly talk about author visits because that is my meat and potato. And I feel like I can talk about that in like six seconds and you can ask me a ton of questions. So here's the deal. I'm completely a nerd and um, I read hundreds of books and I joke around that I want to kidnap my favorite authors and put them in my basement, but instead I host a teen book fest. So if you've never hosted an author event, it can absolutely be scary, but it is one of the coolest events and it is such a great way to A, bring in a storyteller, B, bring in someone who's writing a craft, or C, a oral historian or an expert in the field, right? So you have links. But here's the thing I want to stress. Author visits are great when you pair them with community and curricular connections. So yes, we're going to talk about author visits, but I'm actually going to go over a little bit to number two. So my number two fans, we're going to tackle one, we're going to tackle three and two. Here we go. One of the reasons I got into author visits is I was very fortunate to have Penny Blue Ball, which is the public library and at the public high, at the public library, Eyes Now Public Library. And so here's the deal. I learned a lot from her and, and from bringing in authors myself and obviously starting with my staff and my students. So I got to know my staff and my students, what authors did they want me to bring? Now I was hired to bring in a reading culture. So I realized my reading culture was going to focus a lot on high interest YA novels, but maybe that's not your focus of your school. So remember, what is your focus? What do your students need? What do your teachers need? If your teachers are really STEM-based, right? And they're really science and career-based, maybe it's not quite author visits, maybe it's expert visits in career, science, technology. So again, who can you partner with in your school to make your author visits not only stand alone, but within the curricular and community connections? And hint, 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 it helps with budgeting, okay? So in the beginning, um, after almost 20 years in this job, at this, uh, in this profession, in the school, I didn't always have the budget I had. And I, had to I didn't have staffing. I was hired with no staffing and just me. And I have fought for 17 years to get all that. So in the beginning, I worked with Penny and we did joint programming to bring an author visit. So it was a joint responsibility to bring them in. The reality is, is that most authors do wanna get paid for their time. And so I like to pay them both their honorarium, which is how much you're gonna charge them just to speak, but then you should pay them their travel costs. Now, travel costs is oftentimes how you can wiggle room in a negotiation. And we could talk privately about that, what is, you know, a good way to start with that. But also, this is also where if you have multiple schools or multiple places, you can share funding. Now, another way to get authors that are on the cheap, local authors. Oftentimes, you don't have to worry about travel costs or they'd be like, buy me lunch, pay for my gas. And oftentimes, they will be more sympathetic and understanding of um, their honorarium, which is their speaking costs. Before I go on with more author visit stuff, as a lot of information about honorarium travel, is there a specific direction anyone wants me to take? And this is where just unmute to put in the chat um, and I can keep going. No specific questions there. Okay. All right. So local authors are really 
key here, right? Um, also, if you're looking for what authors to bring in, I am huge with the Lincoln list. So oftentimes, if that's a huge program in your school, that is a reading program that I oftentimes will pull authors in from because I know that it's already a program that is in my curriculum. So at my school, we, the entire first month of school, everyone ninth through 12th grade will have me visit them to roll out the Lincoln program for the year to again, encourage that reading culture to sell that, that would be part of that celebrations, I would put it, but then it's also a curriculum connection because my English team will use those books and choice book projects throughout the year. So on projects where they're like, okay, and my freshman unit, we don't do, let me just also preface this real quick. My school has gotten away from all class reads probably a decade ago. When Kelly Gallagher came out, if you guys know Kelly Gallagher, definitely read him. He's amazing. Read aside. We moved away when he came out with that, uh, that professional development novel years ago. So if you hear me say choice work projects, it's because every year, we usually offer within English one, two, three, AP and et cetera. We do a lot of joint, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Short stories to make sure we're all on the same page, whatever skills or foundations we're teaching. But then instead of having an one book, we used anywhere from five to 10 choice novels all within a theme. I go in and book talk, they choose it, and then they go into whatever project they're doing in the classroom. So for my school, oftentimes, if you notice I'm bouncing around areas one, two, three, and even four sometimes, because what might sound out as a, I'm doing the Lincoln books. I'm going to go into the classroom and promote that. That was my beginning. When I first got hired, that's all I did. But then we realized with Kelly Gallagher and competencies and skill-based and summative, formative, all those fun you know, terms that we all know in education. We now are really doing these high interest narrative nonfiction and fiction titles. So I meet with the team at several points throughout the year and we update these choice book projects. And I use them through things like celebrations, which is that monthly, monthly calendar and things like that, okay? And then I also will pull them for curriculum classes. You know, what can we use? If we're doing empathy, I do a unit on empathy in English one. So if empathy in English one curriculum is wants to be updated, oftentimes I start with the aid list or the, we call them aid, the Lincoln list. And the reason why is a budget reasons, I already am putting money towards it. So why not use it more than once in the curriculum? But then my teachers are already familiar with the list. They like the list too, they, they encourage it. So then I bring it with into the curriculum and then they're going to encourage their kids to use it maybe in a choice book project, an all class read if your students are using all class reads and things like that. And then maybe again, what I would do is maybe use it, bring that author if they're really popular. For example, murder trending is very popular right now. I already had Gretchen McNeil at my team book fest, but she's so popular that my students are asking for her back. So I might do it that way as well. Okay, I'm gonna pause to give you a moment to kind of just look at that. I've been kind of bouncing around and I wanna see, I'm gonna look at chat and I wanna see, does anyone have specific questions? I wanna talk about makerspace because Leah, I love how you just said old is new. So true, <laughs> so true. So. I want to pause. Take a second. Oh, what is my budget? It's um Shannon, are you asking for my book budget or my team book fest budget? My author budget. Okay. Um, are your author visits a whole school event out? Oh, okay, so let me go ahead. Great. Let me talk about both. Um, Shannon, I have a ridiculous budget. My author budget has or my author budget is five thousand dollars um every year, but on top of that. The public library has another $5,000. So we have $10,000 to pull from. But then on top of that, depending on who we bring in, we fundraise. So for the last 10 years, things like, and think about your reading, think about your reading organizations, right? Um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Oh my God, oh my God, Rotary Club, right? Friends of the Library, 
Um, oh my God, is it Kiwanis? One of them is really big too. And they're giving us lots of money. Also, we go to the Chamber of Commerce through our through Ridgewood Norwich Heights. We go through, yes, Kiwanis. Thank you, Deb. Um, we go through the Friends of the Library. We go through any, any organization that donates to this school. We say, hey, if you like literature, then maybe, and you like authors, maybe you want to donate to LitWorks. Okay, or our Teen Book Fest. So budget. So now here's the deal. I didn't always have that budget. That I grew up, I literally had a zero budget. So that's when I was depending on, I actually shifted my book money into the beginning. I kept a couple thousand dollars or thousand dollars or whatever for my books. And I was really big into grant writing. The first teen book fest, the first three at our community were 100% funded by grants. And at that point, I told them that we can no longer keep this sustainable because the idea of getting grants is they want it, they give you one-time use, but if you want to make this sustainable, you have to prove you're going to put money into it, right? A lot of grants. So I had to show to the school, if you truly believe in this, then we will fundraise outside, but you have to go ahead and dedicate X amount of money. And if you need help, come chat with me. We'll help you about that. Okay. So I think that talked a little bit about budgeting and I want to look at Okay, and then hang on, are your author visit whole school event out? They're both. So in the beginning, we have brought in authors where I tie them directly into the classroom. So for example, we had um, Raina uh, Barron, Illinois author. She's more middle school, um, high interest fantasy. And she came in and we bust over all of our seventh and eighth graders from our partner schools. No, they're not in my district. Um, but I go ahead and still go over there because none of them have certified librarians. So, and, and I, and just so you know, when I say librarians, not even certified, they don't even have a library. One school closed their library, which makes me so sad because the principal didn't listen to me. And now they got a new principal and they're coming to me going, what do we do? And I was like, you should have listened to me five years ago, but we'll start. That's a whole other story. The other school is really amazing. And their English teachers have taken on that role of their librarian. So in order to keep that reading culture going, we have made it a point to work so hard with our partner schools and I get release time and compensation to go to those other schools. Um, on top of that, um, hang on one second. Um, I know I, I have 850 for books and everything. I know, and I, I guys, and I know. I, I totally know. And I, I'm telling people I am not the norm. And I will have to tell you when I started 20 years ago, I didn't have this budget either. My budget has increased probably 70% since I was hired. But that's because we have built in so much into the curriculum. I have done so much too. Number two, curriculum and community connections that they can't think about getting rid of it because now the whole community will balk. I didn't do lit works for one year and you do, I can't even tell you how many people are like, you didn't do the team book fast. I was like, well, give me staffing. They gave me staffing. So start small, start with a grant, start with one teacher, one staff member, one community member, one local author, a good honorarium for a local author is a couple hundred dollars. Depending on if they're, if they're New York times bestselling author, that's different. Okay. So it does depend on award winning versus merit. There is, and, and here's what I always tell with, it's a respect thing too. I would never ask someone to give up their time for free. So I try to always pay my authors. So if you want to have a discussion about that in person and off chat, we can totally do that. Okay. Um, and I think it's all about advocacy and collaboration. I just want to stress that Deb mentioned that it truly is. I could not do what I did and am doing without the support of my, my English team. The humanities are my bread and butter. And when I first got in, it was a fight. It was not easy. I would go into them. I, and, and remember, teachers, class time is precious, right? So to convince them to give up their time, I really had to do some like, dig deep here. Right. And not, and I, I'm, you, you may not know this about me, but I'm, you know, some people are fight or flight. I'm kind of a fighter. And so I have to tell myself, don't go pit bull on them. Right. We love them. We want them in our, you know, they know, they just don't realize. So what I have found works 
is I got one person on that English team to let me get in that classroom. I couldn't even let them give me library orientation in the beginning. Now, 20 years later, I literally have English members email me over the summer to book freshman orientation and the eight book talks in the beginning because they want to get it before the other English team, which anyone who knows when I got hired, they almost closed the library. That is not a joke. The, 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 the thing was, we're going to hire a librarian, but we're not going to hire a library staff and we're going to cut the budget by uh, like 50%. So this number two is probably one of the strongest things you have to get data and to get what you need to do all the cool programming ideas that you have. And so what I tell people, um, oh, I love it for those. If you have a large budget, come talk to me. Trust me, we will get you some really cool ideas. So there's two types of camps I feel like, right? Like I'm in the camp where I have, fortunately after this year's, I've gotten a nice budget and it's kind of like, where do I want to go with it? So if you're in that camp with me, we can go ahead and go one route. But if you're in the, I'm still advocating camp, well, then you want to work on number one and two so you can get to three and four. Because I feel like one and two lead to three and four. Um, at least that's what I'm thinking. Um, real quick, what I want to go back is to the makerspace. This is such an easy way to have your school become the coolest place to hang out and the heart of the school, and it's the easiest. So I don't know if your school is like mine. We never used to have this, but now with our really weird modified block scheduling, we have something, we're an advisory model, but we're also on a flex model. It's weird. We host a lot of different sessions in the library. So we have students that come down all the time because they just need a brain break. And so they come down. We have literally a library supply box. We have a whole thing of puzzles, Legos, games, all those low tech things, right? And mind you, I have screens in my library where they can bring their video game system, their PlayStation, their Xbox, and they can literally go right into my digital world and they can play games with their friends as long as they are not being loud and disrupting in around them. I don't care. But I'll tell you what, most of the kids want to break. And most of them do the puzzles, the Legos. And oh my God, do we have this thing called Flex where we host these fun sessions in the library where we do things like friendship bracelets. Oh my God, friendship bracelets. Oh yeah, who's scary? I'm sorry, I'm not sharing the screen. So I apologize. I don't have control over that because my computer's being weird. I do apologize, okay? Um, so just so you know, old is new, friendship bracelets. Oh my God. Oh, this was a really fun one too. This is where you can join up with number two, your curriculum, your public library. They do all types of program at the public library. And they did this really cool day of the dead themed reverse painting where they came in and we host this session in the library. I bought all the supplies and everyone came in and they did this again, day of the dead painting. And it was so cool. And again, it was this makerspace activity that really, I didn't even have to run. I just gave the public library the space. They came in and they hosted the events for my kids. So pretty cool. All right, guys, that's a whole lot of information. We only have a couple minutes. To, oh my God, you have more session. Ah. Do we want to say anything? Do we want to chat? Anything else? Anything else you want me to rant about before I go? I love books. I love authors. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I have lots of great ideas. I really do love this and I love work. Oh, I love your, yeah, yeah. I'm on my note to self. I don't actually, didn't start drinking coffee until my thirties. Um, I am not caffeinated. This is my natural energy. Um, Jeanette, yes. would you put your email in the chat? So people, yes, yes. would you mind sharing that? Not a problem. And please email me. Um, and Deb knows how to harass me. I mean, contact me. Um, and she has no problem. So, so Jeanette, I, I, have a, I have a quick question. Um, uh -huh. When is this author fest that you're hosting? And are you looking for schools to uh, collab with you in bringing some of the authors in? Um, we haven't booked my, my team book fest just because we, 
we did it all on site last year during the school day. And so they want me to do it on site and one proportion in the evening. So we are thinking of doing it not on a Saturday, but during the school day and then evening part in the afternoon with Eisenhower. Um, so I am willing and open to all discussions at this point. I meet on Friday and I will probably start booking authors probably next week. And by October, I will have most of it figured out. So if this is something you are interested in, please reach out to me. And if we can't make it happen this year, most certainly next year. Um, I would love for us to, to, to join forces. It's pretty amazing. Does that I, I think it would be really cool to, to, um, put that, um, you know, you just do amazing work with it, bringing in all these really cool people. And it'd be kind of cool to know who's coming, you know, so we could book yeah. them and, and, and even help you out financially with the, and, and not just me, but like, there could be multiple people that would be, might, might be interested in doing that because once we get them into Chicago, it's not that hard to get them around the state. There's a nice train I hear. I'm and taking so, it Deb, by the way, all the way to Carbondale. So I'm good. <laughs> and Deb, let's chat, let's chat over aisle because I got some ideas for this. And I would love to maybe between you and I, I need to expand this outside of Ridgewood anyways and get it maybe do more of like a library thing and less Ridgewood focus would be really cool. Um, because then everyone could do it. It's not, but then there's money, but we can work, we can talk about that later. I got ideas. Thank All right, you, Jeanette. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm gonna go back to teaching. And um, please, did I put my email in there? I you think did. I okay, good. I don't know what I'm doing, but on that slide that's in your folder, my contact information, my school, reach out to me. Deb has my cell number. You can harass me that way too. And um, peace, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye.